In the early years of life, there are critical periods for learning certain skills. The acquisition of a first language, for example, becomes much more difficult after childhood. Human beings have a language instinct, a universal grammar, but it depends on enculturation. Children have to be exposed to language in order to develop their innate capacity to use it. Like all other mammals, we have an instinct to mate and reproduce. But given the complexity of human mating rituals, could there be an analogous, critical period for learning them, after which it becomes much more difficult? We are a highly social species, and it's worth noting that the prefrontal cortex, involved in social cognition and theory of mind, is not fully developed until age 25. In her book, The Defining Decade, Meg Jay speculated that the late teens and early twenties are the critical period of adulthood, because they are the time when we have our most autobiographically consequential experiences. Let me read you what she said. High school and our twenties are not only the time when we have our most self-defining experiences. Study after study shows they are also the time when we have our most self-defining memories. Adolescence is a time of many firsts, including our first attempt to form life stories. The stories we tell about ourselves become facets of our identity, and life stories with themes of ruin can trap us. No one chooses to be involuntarily celibate or forever alone. But people identify with these labels because they describe a particular life trajectory. It's disconcerting to see the people you went to school with getting married and having their own children. Meanwhile, you're still wondering what it would feel like to have your first kiss. That sounds flippant, but it highlights the nature of human development. As a social species, our most important skills are all interpersonal. That's why the main diagnostic criteria for developmental disorders is social impairment. At one level, the different life trajectory of people who pair bonded at a young age reflects pragmatic considerations. Many life milestones, marriage, buying a home, having children, etc., require a partner. And in modern society, the higher cost of living means that two incomes are now needed to afford many of the things that previous generations took for granted. Today, due to financial constraints, many young adults who are single have no choice but to live with their parents. Financial insecurity is one cause of the arrested development that seems to be afflicting so many young people in the West. But according to attachment theory, social isolation predisposes us to maladaptive developmental pathways. John Bowlby argued that healthy relationships provide a secure base to explore from. In childhood, this is provided by the primary caregiver, in adolescence, by our peer group, and in adulthood, by a romantic partner. Exploration, in the form of risk-taking and pushing boundaries, is essential for healthy development during adolescence. It's better to have peer pressure than to not have peers. So whilst the adults were busy warning us about the dangers of drugs, alcohol and unprotected sex, no one told you about the harm of involuntary celibacy. If you're in this life situation, then by definition, you've missed out on some major developmental milestones, and the older you get, the more you feel left behind. Many researchers have stressed how important it is to have a normal dating life between the ages of 15 and 25. Brian Gil Martin, who studied Love Shy Men, said that this life situation is pervasive for two reasons. It limits the development of interpersonal skills, and it prevents its victims from building the social networks necessary for career and relationship success. Indeed, from an evolutionary perspective, 
Those are exactly the functions that would benefit from an extended period of adolescence, a life history trait that is unique to Homo sapiens. The anthropologist Barry Bogin and the linguist John Locke have suggested that, just as childhood is the critical period for language acquisition, Adolescence is the developmental stage when language is mastered as a social tool for achieving status and relationships. Consistent with this hypothesis, once their voice drops, teenage boys begin using it as a weapon in social combat, displaying their prowess through verbal performance, public speaking, debates, rap battles, etc. Meanwhile, teenage girls engage in far more gossip, which serves to strengthen intimate bonds whilst derogating rivals. Since males compete among themselves for access to females, verbal courtship plays a key role in mate selection, and those with speech impairments like a stutter or developmental delays like autism are often excluded from the dating market. During the teenage years, both sexes become increasingly self-conscious. This too may have an adaptive explanation. Mark Leary has suggested that self-esteem functions as a kind of sociometer, a gauge of our status within a group that monitors our risk of social exclusion. Specifically, we feel good about ourselves when we are included and bad when we are excluded. Since peer relationships become increasingly important during adolescence, it makes sense that teenagers would be hypersensitive to signs of acceptance and rejection, especially from members of the opposite sex. In fact, discovering one's own mate value could be thought of as the evolutionary purpose of adolescence. Lee Kirkpatrick and Bruce Ellis suggest that, through experience in acceptance and rejection in the dating market, young people calibrate their mate value sociometer. If adolescence is the critical period for the development of mating intelligence, this helps to explain the anecdotal observation that girls seem to mature faster than boys. In females, the hormonal cascade that marks the onset of puberty does not correspond with fertility, Essentially, girls look older, and so they are treated like adults sooner. This means that there is an extended time period during which they can learn the intricacies of human mating rituals, whilst the reproductive stakes are still low. Boys, on the other hand, remain juvenile in appearance long after the onset of puberty, with many features like muscularity and facial hair not developing until the late teens. The evolutionary advantage of this arrangement is that boys can learn from older males whilst not being perceived as sexual rivals. This also explains why, in hunter-gatherer societies, rites of passage are considered more important for boys. Girls are already treated as adults based on their precocious appearance. The trouble is, in modern Western societies, Teenage love is the only rite of passage still available to young people, and due to growing social isolation and the proliferation of new technologies, many are missing out on an experience that is crucial to human development. All of the evidence suggests that adolescence is the critical period for acquiring the suite of behaviours necessary to participate in human mating rituals. Therefore, those who are excluded from the dating market during this developmental stage are condemned to a lifetime of loneliness and despair.